Child and Adolescent Behavioral Health is excited to kick off this new segment of Q&A with CNA in Western Stark County with WHS-TV, highlighting a multitude of services Child and Adolescent Behavioral Health offers to Western Stark County and Maslin City School District residents. My name is Dan Mucci. I'm the Mission Advancement Director here at CNA. Today, our first guest is gonna be Joe French, the Chief Executive Officer. Today, Joe will be providing us with an overview of the services and programs the agency offers. Throughout the coming months, you'll meet some of our excellent clinical staff and learn about some of the amazing programs we offer. First off though, welcome to the show, Joe. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. So Joe, start us off. Tell us a little bit about your history, where you grew up, where you went to college, a little bit of your professional background, sure. how you ended up at the agency. Um, so I grew up in Canton City, um, and at one point, seventh grade I think it was, we moved to Louisville. I'm a Louisville Leopard grad and uh, went from Louisville to Kent State University, got my bachelor's in elementary ed. Went on and got my master's in early childhood education at Ashland University. Taken a couple courses towards my doctorate um, uh, in educational leadership, but I was serving on the board at CNA. And somebody, uh, our CEO, announced that he was retiring after 34 years. And a couple board members said, I think you'd be great. Why don't you apply? And the rest is history. I've been at CNA over nine years and have seen it go through lots of transformation <laughs> and growth. But it's been a, a very rewarding opportunity. And your childhood background is just perfect for the agency and providing a great uh, educational and understanding of sure. what kids are going through. Thanks. So you're also involved in a number of community organizations. You sit on some nonprofit boards. So why don't you let our viewers know a little bit about that? Absolutely. So I have, growing up, we basically, my parents, my grandparents all said that you have to give back to your community in some way, shape or form. And so I do that through some community involvement. I serve on the library board. I also am involved with JRC. Uh, family Council. I'm also involved with Leadership uh, Stark County. Just <laughs> finished Leadership Ohio. So lots of uh, great opportunities to give back to the community around really important topics and making sure that um, number one, kids are always <laughs> at the forefront of our decision making. And so stepping outside the nonprofit realm, you're also a political uh, council person. So why don't you let our viewers know a little sure. bit about that? So I am uh, a Myers Lake Village Council member. So I'm in my second term. So I have two more years remaining on this <laughs> term and we'll see where it goes from there. <laughs> That's great. So let's get into a little bit about the organization. So why don't you give our viewers a, an overview of what CNA actually does? So I think a lot of people are, have a misconception about what CNA actually can offer. Um, a lot of times people think it's just an outpatient kind of service and we offer so much more than that. Outpatient is definitely one of the services that we provide. Um, but we also do school-based consultation. We do prevention programming. We do prevention not only for preventing kids from needing ongoing mental health services, but prevention around SUD or substance use disorder. We know about 50% of the kids in middle school and high school typically are using to mask their mental health disorder. And so we will do everything we can to prevent that from happening and becoming a long-term problem. So that's something that we're very proud of as well. But we also have a day treatment program for kids who have had sub severe trauma in their life. And so we will um, serve them. Uh, and then also we have uh, some unique programming called MST, multi-systemic therapy. And then also we have um, a cyber program. Uh, around sexually inappropriate behaviors that kids may mm -hmm. uh, demonstrate and we work very hard to make sure that they understand that that is inappropriate. And But I think, um, you know, we have early childhood treatment, we have early childhood prevention, we have peer programming. So we have a wide uh, a range menu of services mm -hmm. that um, people can choose from. Also, do you want to mention a little bit about the psychiatric services department? Absolutely. So we have a medical department um, and it is for any kiddo that might need a psychotropic drug mm -hmm. prescription. So kids that are ADHD or if they are um, you know, in need of anxiety, depression meds, they have to see our psychiatrist. And we have four prescribers on staff and they can um, see one of the prescribers. Uh, they have to come every 30 days <laughs> for a med check. But um, our medical department is second to none because they specialize in serving children. 
Great. Earlier you mentioned school-based consultation, and of course we have school-based providers in Maslin Middle and Elementary School, as well as out at uh, Tesla local sure. schools. So explain to our audience what their role is and why they are important to have in the schools. School-based consultation is extremely important because we're providing a service right when the need happens. Um, and so what can happen is a school or a teacher, or anybody in the district, a parent can say, hey, can you check in on my child? And we can go in, have a one-off and see how they're doing. We can also then determine, do we need to see them ongoing? So we can open them to ongoing services. But the consultation is really kind of meant to be a check-in. And we can do that up to three hours before we have to open them to ongoing services. So a teacher could say, boy, I've seen a change in Johnny's behavior. What can we do about that? You can refer to our school-based provider. They will check it out and work very closely with the family, determine what are the next steps for that child. So it's immediate services when the student needs the service. There's no waiting. And so even if a kid was having a little bit of an anxiety before a test, somebody could come in Give them a brief. I would say give them the tools for their yeah. toolbox, right? So put the tools in your toolbox to say when you're feeling this, here's some things that you can do to be very effective. And also then I don't need to see you ongoing because I've given you the tools. Um, but then there's other things that are much long term and we need to um, be more involved in the child's life ongoing. But um, the most important thing about school based services is they're immediate and they're right there in the schools when the child says, hey, I need to talk to somebody. Much different than when you and I were in school. Exactly. <laughs> we also have some qualified mental health specialists with the agency. More people would know that as a case manager, perhaps. Mm -hmm. So what services do they provide to individuals? And again, why is it so important that they also work in tandem with the schools? A lot of times a kid doesn't need a therapist, but there is some issues going on in the home. So I always say case managers or QMHSs as we call them, <clears throat> can go into places that the therapist doesn't. So my best analogy has always been that the therapist is kind of like the classroom teacher. So the classroom teacher is here's the knowledge that you need, right? And here's how you apply that knowledge. And then the case managers are kind of like the tutor. And they come in and say, okay, what did your therapist say? Now let's practice that and let's practice over and over again. So case managers go into homes. They can meet somebody out in the community. Um, we can go, if a kiddo says, hey, I wanna go to the local Y, but I want some support, we'll go and support you. So there are a lot of things that we can do with case managers that the therapist can't. And so oftentimes we, during the intake process, we'll say, I'm not sure you need a therapist, but you might need a case manager and we can work very closely with the family to make sure that we're looking at routines, making sure that kids are getting to bed on a cert at certain times. We can look at the um, culture of your home and making sure that that is conducive for everybody uh, for success. But case management goes hand in hand with therapy or it can stand alone. Yes. So the last two years, CNA has partnered with the Maslin Boys and Girls Club. So explain to our viewers a little bit about what we're doing with the kids out at the Boys and Girls Club. And, and it's very similar to our partnership with the Western Y, mm -hmm. um, because we also provide a similar service to the Western YMCA. Um, so what are, mm -hmm. are they're not therapists, uh, there are either our prevention specialist or a QMHS case manager will go to the site and they're there on site, again, kind of like in that consultative uh, mode where they can kind of uh, really help diffuse situations before they get bigger than they need to. We're also working very closely with the staff themselves because staff can also suffer from secondary trauma. Mm -hmm. And so we're helping them understand how to diffuse situations, how to put things in a positive light, how to kind of handle tough situations mm -hmm. because that's what we're trained to do, right? Mm -hmm. And help, our, help that staff understand the importance of what they're trying to accomplish. And so we are very proud of that partnership. Uh, we've been in the Y or in the Boys and Girls Club, as you said, over two years. And what really kind of prompted it is COVID. I mean, we knew that kids were coming back to school at a deficit. And so we wanted to be there and let's remove the obstacles around behaviors mm -hmm. and those kind of concerns so they can stay in structured environments. Because we know when children are in structured environments, they thrive. 
Awesome. So we also have a unique program at CNA called Triple P, Positive Parenting Program. Um, tell us a little bit about that, which we'll learn a little bit later in the segments we're going to do, but just give us a brief overview of what that looks sure. like. Sure. So Triple P is a parenting program, and here's the good news. You don't have to be an open client for, uh, for us to provide that service. And there's multiple layers, and once you kind of have <laughs> Larissa on to discuss that, um, she'll go into those layers. But it can be anything from we can come into your home and provide some parenting and coaching, uh, and then or we can do some just online education. Mm -hmm. So it really is tailored to what the family needs, and then we will meet that need. But a lot of times, before they become a major issue with behaviors or mental health concern, we can get in and kind of teach the parents what to look mm -hmm. for and understand some of it is typically developing kind of things and other things you might be, want to be concerned about. And here's the tools that you can use to be successful long term. So where could our viewers find out some more information about the agency uh, if they're seeking some services. Sure, so I would encourage them to go to our website, um, and it's pretty simple, www.childandadolescent, spell it all out, <laughs> .org, and you will find a lot of resources. There's great resources for families. There's great resources for educators. There's resources for medical professionals. So again, our staff are the leading experts in Stark County when it comes to mental health for children and youth. And so they are really the primary authors of a lot of those resources. And I would encourage people to go and take a look at that. Also, if you're looking for just what other services do we provide, there's a whole list there. And if you want to be a donor, we would love to have that too. There's an opportunity for you to um, hit that donation button and make a donation to the agency as well. Yeah, and there's a lot of great resources from COVID even we developed mm -hmm. with uh, for parents, teachers, everybody about uh, tips on anxiety, depression. You know, one of the things I always say, Dan, is that um, parents, you don't have to have a license. <laughs> you have to have a license to have a dog, but you don't have, get, have to have a license. So they don't come with an instruction right. manual, right? And so it's hard sometimes. And we know that parenting is not easy in today's world. So any kind of resource that you need, don't hesitate to reach out. Again, it could just be we can pro send you a flyer and you're good. Mm -hmm. Other times it might be, hey, I really do think my child needs to be open to ongoing services. And there's no shame in that. We need <laughs> right. to talk about taking away the stigma because if you have cancer, you go and get treatment. So if you're dealing with a mental health issue, get treatment. Yes, and so besides the website, you can also call 330-433-6075. So this wraps up our segment, our first segment, Q&A with CNA in Western Stark County. We appreciate CEO Joe French stopping by to give us a terrific overview of the agency and really just scratch the surface here. CNA is grateful to be partnering with WHSTV on this series of programming and until the next episode, this is Dan Mucci thanking you for joining us.